Um, we have five minutes for, uh, for a, a very short discussion. Uh, we've invited uh, Helena Laksonen. She uh, works at the FSD. Uh, she's the director of the Finnish Social Science Data Archive since 2017. And before that, she was the information officer and deputy director since 2004. Um, she has also been involved in several European data archiving projects and is currently chair of the CESDA General Assembly. She's also the CESDA um, ambassador on COVID-19. So Helena, as, as a CESDA COVID-19 ambassador, what steps has CESDA taken to improve discoverability of the suddenly new kind of behavioral data or social science data collected across its service providers? Thank you, Marike, for the introduction. Um, Yes, well, there are several actions CESTA has taken. And I think one of the first ones to mention is that um, new uh, search terms were added to the multilingual thesaurus so that uh, you can find uh, COVID-19 data in, in the data catalog. So as, the, as you saw, Ale Bloom uh, showing how to find the data, it's possible because of those uh, new search terms. And um, okay, one quite early on action was also adding COVID-19 page to the CESTA website. If you go to the website, you will find it in the, in the upper, upper navigation, COVID-19 there. And um, there has also been highlights in social media. Uh, I mean, data highlights so that um, we can have more users and more, more, more sort of um, audience for the data that's published in the, in the data catalog. Uh, those are one or, or some things and then of course, the booklet was already mentioned. Then I noticed that um, uh, there is also a recent news item which gather, gathers all these efforts together. So if you go to the website, you will find that one. And of course, there is a, a lot of going on um, by the service providers. As CESTA is a distributed infrastructure, there is some um, service providers are functioning on their own and there's also these um, centralized services as you have seen today and you will see more thank you thanks a lot helen i think those are very interesting topics it's really to help researchers find those treasures that you that, that we've seen from uh, from judah for example and that we've seen that anna and Filippo and Davide have been using also uh, um, yeah from the service providers and says the data catalog uh, thanks then uh, our, our next invite uh, is Julia Malagerna, Mar Malagernera. Uh, she's a former president of Eurodoc, uh, the European Council of Doctoral Candidates and Junior Researchers. Uh, she's a translational uh, researcher with a PhD in neuropharmacology. I hope I presented you well, Julia. Uh, but we wanted to ask you, is it based on the presentations that you've seen now, so how would you describe the societal impacts of COVID-19 related data that are available now? Yeah, I was impressed by the presentation that uh, uh, all the people, all the researchers have done uh, earlier today. And of course, when we think about COVID data at the moment, uh, uh, probably because of the media, we are bombarded by, um, by clinical related data. So we are not such used to, to uh, social data, which is uh, actually, uh, relevant for policy making. So, uh, in fact, uh, also in uh, Eurodoc, we collected uh, a lot of uh, data, a lot of service uh, between uh, our members. So, Eurodoc is an umbrella um, organization made of national association representing early career researchers. And, uh, in fact, then we select uh, what happened during uh, the COVID-19 uh, um, restriction and uh, when we speak with policymaker, we also underline this kind of data that are relevant 
uh, for uh, career progression, for uh, uh, the serious impact in the real life of researchers. So, of course, uh, social data are equally important uh, of uh, clinical data or vaccination data. So, um, I think uh, that uh, having this uh, database and uh, the guide that was presented today has uh, a really great impact in uh, our society. Thanks a lot, Julia. Thanks.